All right, now we don't, don't normally go to voicemail as early as this, but we want to get things started. Let's see what uh, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason uh, brought in tonight. Hey, Les, sorry, it's been 48 hours, but I still can't make heads or tails out of the Clevenger trade. I think that they really jumped the gun on this. They should have held on to him until uh, the off season. I see no benefit in running out to get a grab bag of players that are basically the equivalent of Bradley Zimmer, Bobby Bradley, Yu Chang, a lot of guys that may be 4A players. It just doesn't make any sense. All right, D-Man, let's take the other side. What does make sense about this? And if it's not enough, why did they make the deal? Well, it makes sense if you buy into the uh, the idea, that, as I do, that the Indians are not in the business, or at least this ownership is not in the business of going all in to try to win a World Series year in and year out, as we would define going all in. In other words, uh, you know, stockpile as many studs as possible and pay them handsomely. This is an organization now under this ownership that decided they're going to try to annually contend for the AL Central Division title and therefore the playoffs. And if they get into the postseason, then the postseason is a crapshoot and they'll see how far they can go. But the days of the Indians spending uh, Boku dollars to, quote, try to win a World Series, in my opinion, are over. Now, those words will get, you know, backlash from the Indians. They'll say, well, of course we're in the business to win the World Series. Of course we want to win it all. Uh, yeah, you could say that publicly, but your actions, uh, in my opinion, are different than that. And And honestly... I'm in I'm in the real world now, Les. I don't believe anymore that the Cleveland Indians are going to go full fantasy baseball and try to win a World Series every year. So I just am content with what uh, what their philosophy is. I, but it's hard for me to believe that the million million millionaires and billionaires who own franchises. I got to believe when they walk into the owners' meetings, they don't want to be a second place team. They want to be one. Uh, showing the ring, showing the trophy, showing all that stuff. I, I, when I hear people say the Dolans don't want to win, I, I look for reasons why that would be true, and I, and I don't find them. There's Les, nothing, okay. nothing that I can be sold on to say they don't want to win. Let, let me, all right, well, lest I, I, be, lest I be misconstrued, I, in no way did I mean to say that I don't think the Dolans want to win. I think every owner wants to win a World Series, okay? But... Each owner takes a different path to getting there. And I think the days of the Dolan ownership with nine-digit payrolls on opening day, I think those days are over. And I think what they've decided is they're going to do their best to get into the playoffs. And they've looked at the playoff landscape and said, you know what, in Major League Baseball, a lot can happen in the postseason. The best team doesn't always win. So if we win a World Series, great. That does not mean I'm saying the Dolans don't want to win. It just means they're operating under a, a different set of circumstances, in I, my opinion. So where does the Clevenger deal come in? Does this come in where what he did, what he and the police act did in Chicago that night, that was that strong that it forced the shakeup? that wouldn't allow them to wait to the end of the year? Or is the Clevenger, is that more of waiting for arbitration next year? Uh, maybe there's some, we don't know, but of the six guys they got from San Diego, maybe one was one that they highlight on and think that that's the one that's going to make, make the deal happen, even though we don't know who that guy is. So where does that stand? Well, I, I think what, it's, all, it's a little bit of everything you just said, Les. Um, I would have preferred they hang on to Clevenger through this year and go into the postseason with a one-two punch of Bieber and uh, Clevenger, not necessarily counting on Carlos Carrasco to be dominant because I do wonder a little bit about his stamina. But at the very least, I would have uh, Bieber and Clevenger at the top of my rotation as I go through uh, this crazy playoff format uh, that is 2020. They decided not to do it, so because they trade him, 
it looks like what he did in Chicago had something to do with it. And I suppose it could, it, that could be the case. Now, of course, Antonetti's going to deny it publicly, the, uh, Chris Antonetti, president of baseball operations, which he did because, you know, he doesn't want it to be known at all that that was the reason. But you have to believe the Padres, you know, they carried the tea leaves. They understand that Clevenger was probably uh, more expendable than not because of what went down in Chicago. But I will say this. If you're an organization and you are just going to trade people based on their off-the-field stuff or their antics, then you got issues, I think. You can't strictly unload a guy because of uh, behavioral problems. Well, I, I agree with that, and that's why, that's why I believe that there's much more to it than what we're led to believe. That's entirely possible. Yeah, unless the guy becomes a malcontent and, you know, he's so defiant of authority, he's like, I'm, you know, I hate this place. Okay, fine, then you got to move him. But to me, it looked like Mike Clevenger had come back from the banishment, from the alternate site banishment. It looked like he had come back repentant and very sorrowful about what he had done. And it looked like he was going to be the citizen of the year for the remainder of the season. <laughs> That's why I felt like you could hold on to him until at least the off season and then move him. But well, Bieber, Bieber did the same thing. What a performance he turned in the other night. And I don't care if they're playing Kansas City, Detroit, or anybody else. This is the big leagues, and they, they responded, as we would hope they would. Well, you're talking about Plesak last night? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, right. And, and that's why I found it comical almost last when. You heard people say, well, because of what uh, uh, Police Sack and Clevenger did, because of their immaturity, uh, they're both, they, the Indians got to get rid of both of them. Why? I mean, you don't have to get rid of both of them. You didn't even have to get rid of one of them. Okay. If you have other reasons for getting rid of Clevenger, fine. But don't tell me, oh, you just got to get rid of both Clevenger and Police Sack. Yeah. Zach Police Sack is a really, really good pitcher that you could potentially have under your control for years and years and years. You don't just cast him aside because of uh, what he did in Chicago. All right, what we haven't mentioned is the possibility that the Indians look at, at uh, Clevenger the way I look at him, and that is he's a guy with an injury waiting to happen. I've never seen a, a motion like that, and now that you see it, you wonder how it's ever going to get through the year or next year or the year after that. And I wonder if that's part of it also. It could be less, but remember this. The other team has scouts, and the other team has uh, pitching coordinators and pitching coaches. So the San Diego Padres, no doubt, looked at the same motion that we look at, and they said, you know what, we're comfortable enough with this guy for the next couple of years. Uh, even if we over here might have thought, okay, that's an injury waiting to happen, the Padres obviously felt like it was good enough for them to take the risk. And I think that the if you want to look at it this way, the Padres got what they wanted, what they desperately needed, which was a front-of-the-rotation starter to go with that really exciting lineup and some other pieces in that, on that pitching staff. The Indians got three players they immediately promote to the majors, three who are prospects. Uh, they keep evolving as a as a roster, as an organization, to try to stay contenders, but not fall into the dreaded rebuild mode that Detroit and Kansas City are in. So, in one sense, both sides got what they wanted. 